Hey guys, I'm Sam Crack, and I receive a ton of emails from you guys regularly regarding bidding on cars at Copart. And while it's very simple to bid on and purchase a car at Copart, I believe it's very necessary for you to do a certain amount of research before deciding on the specific car for your specific project. So what I want to do today is show you how I look at cars exactly before I decide whether it's the right car to bid on, and then take you through a couple tips and tricks that I use on Copart's website to make things easier and more successful for my rebuild projects. Here, let me take you on the computer now and I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. So we're here on Copart's site and I like to just dive right in and find the sort of car that I'm interested in. But the only issue is these cars could be in a location far away from you. And in the case of all of these Audi R8s, they're all in California. And I'm in Florida, so they're on the opposite side of the country. And for normal cars, I tend to stay away from cars that are a long distance away. But since the R8 is an exclusive car and will be more difficult to come by at auction, I don't mind browsing listings in California. However, if you're just interested in cars that might be close to you and maybe a run-of-the-mill car, a Honda Accord or a Toyota Camry, if we go to the Vehicle Finder under Find Vehicles, it will give us the option to search based on more specific settings. So we could go here and search within 50 miles of my zip code. Again, I don't mind paying for shipping because I know that I'm going to end up saving a lot of money by the time the rebuild project is finished. So the shipping fees are an added cost. However, I do frequently look at my local auction listings just to see what sort of interesting stuff pops up there because I know it'll be super easy for me to pick it up and cost me next to nothing. Copart has three main designations, or at least what I call a designation. They've got something that says an E, an S, or an R. This first one is an S, the next two are R's. When we click on R, it tells us that it's a run and drive, and that means exactly what it sounds like. That means the engine will start and the car will drive forward and backward under its own power. Now, S just means that the engine starts, so there could be a transmission issue or maybe one of the suspension components is messed up. The car will not roll or drive under its own power. There could be an electrical issue, there could be a million different things wrong, but it just means that even though the engine will start, the car is not driving forward or backward. Last, there's something that says E, and none of these Audis have the E, but E is an enhanced vehicle, which basically means that it could have had some sort of enhanced service provided, like a cleaning or something of the sort. However, it doesn't mean that the car ran, drove, nor started. So keep that in mind when you're looking. The car most desirable out of these three seem to be this 2017, so we're going to take a closer look at it. Now, the first photo is absolutely beautiful, but before we decide to jump into the photos, I like to immediately look at the dock type. That's likely the most important spec here on this list. This car has a State of California salvage certificate, which means exactly what it sounds like, a salvage title. And if you've watched any of my previous videos, you know that I generally buy a salvage title car and I get it rebuilt here in the state of Florida so that it's legal for road use. Now that would generally mean that this car is okay to buy with the expectations of turning it into a rebuilt car here in my state of Florida to be able to use it on the road. Now the other thing I like to look at is right here, the seller. In this case it says UFI. We've talked about UFI in the past and I really won't go into it in this video, but sometimes this will say the name of an insurance company and if you know the cars that I tend to like to buy, they usually come from the insurance company. Now that we know that the car has a salvage certificate so we could potentially rebuild it and the seller is likely not an insurance company, it gives us a little bit more insight. Now, of course, we got to check out these photos. And in most of the photos, the car looks pristine, almost like a brand new Audi R8 V10 Plus. If we notice here in the interior, it does look like there's some rips. And it also looks like the dashboard is all marked up. So obviously this car was vandalized and it shows in the interior. But the engine looks great. We know it's a run and drive. Here's the odometer, which clearly has another vandalism issue. And uh, the rest of the car looks pretty decent. Now, my personal assessment of a car like this is that it looks exactly like what they're telling me the damage is. It's a vandalized, brand new Audi R8, although we can't tell what the mileage is. And that means that now I need to decide on a price that's satisfactory to me. You can see here that they're offering it for $105,000 by now, and you can make an offer. Otherwise, the bid's at $41,250. But since this car isn't for sale by the insurance company, something that I've told you guys that I like to do in the past is just Google the VIN number and see if this car was ever sold 
before at auction. The first photo that pops up is clearly of an Audi R8. However, if we look at the description, it's of a 2015. We know the car that we're looking at is 2017, so this isn't the right car. Next are the photos we just saw on Copart's website. But if we go down a little bit more, we find what the vandalism looked like originally before it was cleaned up a little bit. And it's normal. You know, a dealership or a third party bought this car, cleaned it up as best as they could, and they're offering it again for resale. If we look here, we can see that somebody spray painted and chopped up the inside like we saw in the other photos. Obviously, the spray paint was easy enough to clean up, but the damage to the odometer and the damage to the dashboard and leather seats is a little bit more difficult to deal with. Although it's definitely something that I wouldn't say would make for a difficult rebuild project. Finding those original photos to me is imperative. It lets me know that this car has changed hands once at the auction and that somebody did clean it up, obviously with the attempt to purchase it and make a little bit of money. And there's nothing wrong with that. This is Copart and this is the correct place to be marketing a salvage car. Just keep in mind, it's not Copart that's doing this. It is definitely a third party or a dealer. At this point on this specific car, I've got a pretty good assessment and I've got an idea of what I might be interested in bidding on it. But since it's not up for auction yet and it's still four days out, I'll wait a little bit closer to that day and decide whether it's right for me to bid on. Now besides just understanding the car better, there's one other really big thing here and that is whether I can legally buy this car myself. See, I'm just an individual interested in buying a car from the salvage auction. And there are laws that vary state to state whether or not you can purchase a car like this Audi R8 from Copart. Now the nice thing is that there's services that help us, you know, regular individual buy cars at the salvage auction regardless of whether the state law allows them to or not. If we go right here under support and then click help with licensing, it brings up one of my favorite pages within the Copart website and that is the licensing map. Basically, I am buying a car from the state of California or thinking about buying that Audi from the state of California. So when I click the state of California, it will bring up a page telling me what the state law is in California in layman's terms. So right here is a yellow light and it says without business licenses you will need a broker's help to bid on clean and salvage title vehicles in California. That means I won't be able to directly bid through Copart's site. But what I can do is use a broker, a middleman essentially, to help me bid on this car and win it using their dealer's license. Now, if you're interested in finding a broker, I've linked mine in the description box below, but you're also welcome to go here under the support pages on Copart and find their list of brokers that they make available to you. Now, it's a requirement of most states that you do have some sort of dealer or broker's license. I'm here in the state of Florida, and you'll see that it's very similar to the rules of the state of California. It says the same exact thing right here that we just read. But there are a few states that you can just buy from because their state permits it. Now, the easiest way to find these cars is if you go up here to where it says find vehicles and we go back to the vehicle finder, Right under Featured Items, we click on No License Required Vehicles. There's 58,113 No License Required Vehicles, meaning you can bid directly through Copart. And the benefit there is you won't have to spend any money on a broker's fee. It's something that I usually have to pay every single time that I buy a car from the auction because I am using the assistance of my broker. Here there are a bunch of different filter options where we can sort by the type of car or we can go and sort by the cars selling closest to present time, a bunch of different things that you can do. So let's go ahead and search for a Ferrari that requires no license. We'll click right here to eliminate most of our search results and there are two Ferraris currently being sold, one in Texas, one in Georgia, that require no license. Now here's a 2018 488. Its current bid is $158,000 and it's being offered right here from State Farm Insurance and again, it's got a Georgia certificate of title. That's good for a person like me because if I have an interest in rebuilding this car, I go ahead, I fix it, bring all of my paperwork to the state inspector's office, and once all of that is finished and they've deemed the car ready for road use again, I'll be good to go and be able to use this Ferrari again on the road. Although I'll be honest, as much as I love the Ferrari 488, that's kind of out of my wheelhouse as far as buying it. But that doesn't stop me from taking a look at the photos and kind of getting a good idea of what's wrong with this car. So clearly the front end has some damage there. And we can also see the side mirror has been smashed off. The fender looks dented in. All along the driver's side, there's a little bit of damage. 
It looks like the passenger side is in pretty good shape, and the interior looks absolutely immaculate. This is a really, really amazing car. Well, it says that there is an airbag system failure. So one of the knee airbags or one of the ones that wasn't very visible in the photos might have deployed. We'll go and take one more look. Oh, right here, knee airbag on the driver's side looks like it deployed. So I didn't see that at first glance. That's why it's good to really study these photos up close, really make sure you know what you're getting yourself into. Otherwise, this car is a run and drive, and to me it looks like it would make for a successful rebuild project. Now, a successful rebuild project is my number one goal when it comes to purchasing one of these cars that has some sort of damage in order to rebuild it and then use it on the road again. In a lot of cases, there's cars that are kind of far gone and they're really more meant to be used as maybe a parts vehicle. Now, here's a really battered 2017 C43 AMG Mercedes. And just by the first photo, we can tell that this car likely wouldn't make for at least that simple of a rebuild project or a successful rebuild project. This is a car that is basically only good for parts. And this is a severely damaged car, so even a lot of the parts are not going to be very usable on it. Doesn't mean it's completely worthless, though. There is some stuff that you could harvest off of this car. If you notice, this listing has the E that we talked about earlier for an enhanced vehicle, and it also has a non-repairable vehicle certificate in the state of California. This is exactly the sort of stuff that I want you guys to look out for. There are cars sometimes that look to be in pretty good condition, but come with something that is a non-repairable vehicle certificate, or maybe it's called a certificate of destruction. Maybe it's called a junk title or a parts only certificate. These are words that you have to familiarize yourself with. Make sure you don't purchase one of these cars unknowingly and then end up with a car that maybe you even go as far to rebuild. But when you go to get the paperwork processed on it, it ends up being no good and something that you're unable to actually register for road use. I'm always searching for a ton of different makes and models on Copra. I have a couple cars in my watch list as of right now, one of them being this 2017 Ford Focus RS. But sometimes these cars pop up for auction and I don't catch them or one of you guys email them to me. I didn't even realize it showed up. There are tens of thousands of cars on Copart at any given time. So the best way to find out when a new car that you might be interested in coming on the auction block is to go up here at Find Vehicles and look for vehicle alerts. When it comes to something rare like the Audi R8, we can go and type in from year 2008 to current day, click Audi and find R8. And right here, we'll do a daily search or a weekly search, depending on what you tell it to do. You go ahead and put in your first, last name, and sign up. And you'll be notified when a new R8 is added to auction. I have a handful of these alerts because, again, I'm interested in so many different makes and models. And when it comes to salvage cars, they're all different. A lot of them I'm going to pass on because the damage is too extensive for me to have a successful rebuild project. But there's a handful of them that will make for a really great rebuild project. And those are the ones I go ahead, like this Ford Focus RS here that we talked about in the live stream. And I add them to my watch list, which is easy enough as just clicking that button right there. We'll take a quick look at this Ford Focus RS if you didn't catch it in the live stream. This car is basically a car that was bought back by State Farm Insurance. It's a run and drive with a clean title. See right here, it says Michigan Certificate of Title. $6,500 pure sale current bid. This car is going to sell to the highest winner. That's what a pure sale is. This Ford Focus RS is one that I'm definitely keeping an eye on just because it's one of those cars that exhibited what seems to be very light damage and still seems like the mechanics are intact. And it even still holds that clean title that we just mentioned. So. Copar will also keep you up to date via email on your watch list item. So in the case of this car that has a future sale date, meaning they haven't set an exact auction date for it yet, when it comes up for auction or has a specified date, you'll get notified to know exactly when that is so you don't miss out on the auction. Talking about auctions, it seemed like there was one Focus RS that is coming up for auction right now. Now the best way to spot a car that you're interested in an auction is to add it to your watch list. So I'm going to go ahead and click the star on this car. This car is in Reno, Nevada, and we're going to join the auction. Now, this auction hasn't officially started. It's going to start in three minutes' time. But here's our list of cars. And the really great thing about these Copart Live auctions is that our star right here, because we've added this to our watch list, lets us identify the car that we're interested in easily. 
And there's an estimated time right here on the left, 29 minutes, letting us know that from the start of this auction, 29 minutes in, give or take, is roughly when we're going to see this Ford Focus come up for bid. So right now we're in a live Copart auction. Even though this one is for commercial vehicles, they all look the same. In this case, there's a Chevy Silverado work truck being auctioned off right now. The high bidder is in Florida at $6,500, and they'll continue to bid until, well, somebody wins. Right here is where I would click to bid if I was interested in bidding. It says you are not eligible to bid on this item. That's because I haven't placed a deposit high enough to bid on this car. Once your registration is completely finished, you'll be able to add some funds into your Copart account so that you're able to bid on any auction you please up to a certain amount based on your deposit amount. Bonus time. And there you have it. It sold for $6,800. Now here's a flooded BMW M3, and I specifically wanted to touch on flood cars briefly because I get a ton of emails with links to flood cars and people wanting my assessment on them. And it's near impossible for me to assess any sort of damage on a flood car just by looking at the photos. We see that this car has a salvage vehicle title, so it definitely has the potential to be rebuilt and turned back into a road legal vehicle, bearing that it's not completely destroyed from the flood. Now, while we look through these photos, I want to tell you that the best sort of research you can do on a flood vehicle is go down to the Copar location yourself and take a look at the car. This is a question I get a lot. Can I go as an individual down to a Copar location and look at the car? And the answer is yes. Register for an account, you'll get a buyer number. Even though you might not be able to bid in your state, you will be able to go and inspect the car. It's always good to call the actual Copart location before, make sure the car's there, and just let them know that you're on your way. And I've always had great success going down and checking out a car in person. As you can see from the photos of this BMW, it just looks like an older used BMW. There's no real indication what could be a problem. Remember, even though this car says it's a run and drive, that doesn't mean that there's a major mechanical issue with the engine, that maybe the engine just has reduced power and it's still moving the car forward and backward. There's no way of telling without you physically putting your hands on the car. And of course, the best way of doing that is by checking it out yourself. Now, if you're out of state, but you're really set on a specific vehicle on each listing page down on the bottom, there's typically a place that tells you that you can write here. If you aren't able to inspect vehicles prior to bidding, you may hire an inspector to perform a vehicle for you. If we click hire an inspector, there's a list of inspectors. You can click the specific facility that the car is in, and then it will give you a name and a number of someone you might be able to contact that will go and take a look at the car for you and give you that much more information on it that you weren't able to attain from just looking at the listing itself. Well guys, I hope you found this one helpful. If you did, be sure to hit that like button. Also, if you have any additional questions, you can find my contact information in the description box below, as well as a link to Copart's website and also a link to the broker that I personally use to assist me to buy cars that I normally wouldn't be able to. Thanks a whole lot for watching and I'll catch you very soon.